when it comes to supply teachers, children don't really listen because they just think that they can just take the mickey. You haven't got a supply teacher, yeah? most children got out of control. All the children think like, because someone else is here, it's an opportunity for them to do whatever they want. If we have a supply teacher, people speak and then all that thing, and then we get detention. Supply teachers get a bad press, but it's a difficult job, and the experienced ones use a range of techniques and skills to do it well. This programme follows Emma Clamp as she copes with a day's placement in a challenging school. She qualified five years ago, and this is her second year on supply with Select Education. All Emma knows about today is the department, humanities, and the name and address of the school. It can be quite difficult when you're looking at the school if you get a call at about seven, between seven and half past seven. Some schools like you to be in by eight o'clock, which is cutting it quite fine. I'm actually a maths teacher, so it should be quite interesting. Um, never know quite what you're going to get with cover. Today is going to be a little bit more difficult with humanities, just in the sense that it's not my subject. Um, so I'll try and get to the lessons beforehand and have a little look at what the work is. Probably some of the kids from school. Lister Community is a popular East London school and had a good Ofsted last year. But it's hardly a pushover and Emma's expertise is going to be tested. OK, Emma, do come in. You're a bit from place to place. Andy Croker is a full-time manager and the day's well prepared. There are the children you're Thank working you. with. These are the timings of the school day, a map of the school and very good luck. Emma's just got time to look at the schedule. Not a full day of humanities after all. It's seven, eight and nine. Um, looks like geography, some maths, which is going to be quite good. Agency teachers are like the full range of, the range of human beings. There'll be some who are very, very good, and there are some who are very, very bad. What we're looking for is somebody with a quiet authority that can engage the children in what's to be done so that at the end of it, something meaningful has happened. Guys, how do we um, get up here then? But first, she's got to find the classroom. Uh, looks like I'm going to have to go round the other way because I can't get through here. I'm going to actually go back through this way. The difficulties are getting around the school, a school that you don't know very well. I've been here once before, but I didn't actually know the layout, so actually getting from one place to the next place and trying to get there like I like to get there before the kids, and that's not possible at times. Excuse me, um, do you know where 403 is? 403 is right down the corner. OK, thank you. It's maths, Emma's subject, and the class has been left specific work so she can assert quiet authority right away and quickly move on to teaching. You're going to have to order decimals, OK? So you've got to say which numbers are bigger than other numbers. You've got 0.45 and 0.405. Put your hand up if you think that one's bigger. One, two, two people, OK? If you get stuck, put your hand up. I'm a maths teacher, I'll come round and help you. OK? So just put your hand up if you're not sure. Um, don't normally get seating plans, so that's an added bonus. Um, along with the photos, it's really easy to, to find out their names, so, so I can say... Amir, stop talking, please. OK. Right, question one, put your hands up. Which is the largest? Um, 0 0.45. 0 0.45, good. What's the next one? Um, 0 0.19322. And then 0 0.5281. Yeah, 0 0.5281. Normally when they start talking is when they're 
they might not understand something, so I'll, I'll go in and, and try and help them with the questions. Which one's the largest out of all of these numbers? Some pupils don't like to ask for help, especially if they don't know you. That's a what? Zoom. That's a? Zoom. That's a? Zoom. That one? Zoom. So which is the biggest? That one. Good. It might have been just that they needed some help, but they want to actually ask for help, so they do something else to draw attention to themselves. There's only a few minutes to get to the next lesson, and it's in a completely different department. Girls, do you know where the science labs are? Yes. Upstairs, thank you. Finding the room is just the beginning. It's a science lab, so it's locked. Um, door's locked, so I'm going to try and find the key. Um, yeah. Just wait there, guys. When the unexpected happens, Emma stays calm and gets on with solving the problem. All right, in you come. Sit down where you normally sit, please. It was a bad start, so getting them settled is going to be harder. Guys, can you come in sensibly, please? It looks like science. Um, year seven, so they're going to use these books, and I'm just having a quick look through. Some lessons are very prepared, so I have a lot of material to work with. Other lessons, the teacher might not necessarily leave you much, so you have to then use your own imagination. Who can give me a type of force? We've just read about them. Um, gravity. Gravity, OK. If there was no pull on that rocket, what would happen to it? It'd just keep going and going and going. So you've got to have gravity, it's going to bring it back down to Earth. Right? In the science lesson, the Year 7s were doing about forces, and it's funny how much you actually remember from what you do at school when you look at these textbooks. Um, so I was able to help them with that. Boys? This is more like a typical supply lesson in the sense that they probably wouldn't talk this much. I wouldn't have thought they would talk this much with their teacher. They might do, but you, you just don't know. I can't give out merit, yes, you could. can I? Yeah. You've got to give me two. Two? Just you are just signing you know, I'll, I'll give, give you one. one. They can be a lot more chatty and friendly with you because they might not see you as a teacher. They might think that you're someone slightly different. But also they can misbehave because they might think that you're only there a day and you don't really care about what's going on in the class because you're not going to be there the next day. The last lesson of the morning, and it's another trek to find the class, Year 7 Humanities. For the first time, she has to really work to establish order. Right, Year 7, listen up, please. That means you need to stop talking. It's your lunchtime after this lesson. Shh. So it's completely up to you, because I will keep you in at the end. We just saw the teacher coming in and I felt quite annoyed because I was thinking that, oh, we're having, we're going to have another lesson ruined again. Some children were making noises and throwing stuff and if our normal teacher weren't there, she won't accept that. Turn around, sit on your chair properly. This one's a little bit more difficult because they're at very different stages of the work. So some of them have finished everything I've written on the board, so they're going to be on to some other work, and some of them weren't here, so haven't even started. Yeah, yeah. It's still important to see the pupils as individuals, not just a group. I might have to move you because you keep talking to Reese, don't you? So just move up to this end of the desk. That's it. Okay. No, no, it's fine. Right. You can get on with your work. I find sometimes, because you don't know the history of the group or you don't know who's friends with who, you have no idea when you step into that classroom that moving someone, you could actually be creating more of a problem for yourself. I've got six report cards to fill in at the end of the lesson. I've never had six before, so I've had to leave them on their desks so I know who they are. Because I had a report in our hand, she'll obviously think I'm a bad 
child. By looking at that picture, does it look steep? Does it look dangerous? She probably thinks I've done something really bad and horrible, so I tried to work harder because I don't want her to see me in that way. I'm not always that. I've got good well done. Thank you, me. OK, okay off you go. It's a short, late lunch break at this school, with just one period in the afternoon. Every teacher knows that can be the worst of the day. But it's maths again, this time a year eight class she had earlier. Can you hurry up, please, and sit down? Thank you. Do you normally sit there? I'll check with your teacher. So sit where you normally sit, please. Right, what's the problem? Sit down then. Sit down, please. Sit down, please. After lunch, that last lesson is a killer, getting them settled. I had the same group first period to last period, and there was a distinct difference. Girls, feet on the floor, please. Face the front. Face the front. That's that way. Good. That's better. Guys, I won't ask you again. Shh, you're being rude now. You're being especially rude by shouting across the classroom. By trying not to shout herself or lose her temper, Emma keeps enough control of the class to move them onto some work. OK, so it looks like you've finished this first chapter, OK? So you need to finish the questions at the end of that chapter. Right, can you put your hand up if you need a ruler, please? Um, wait, do that again and you'll be out. Right, I'll see you at the end of the day. What is the page number? So you need to put today's date. What's the problem now? Half an hour in, and she's at last got some time to spend on individual learning. OK. So I times it by... Right. But do I times it by 67? OK, I've got 67 centimetres. Um, boys! Well, I'll come back in one minute. It's exhausting, but patient reasoning still works at the end of the day. I'm trying to help someone at the other end of the classroom. No, 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 it's both of you, and I can't help them unless you're getting on with your work, OK? The bell's already gone, and I'm still waiting for people to be quiet. Girls in the middle table, off you go. Girls in the middle table, off you go. Bye. When I go to a new place and I get this list of lessons, I think, how can I make the best out of all these lessons? But it can be a bit testing at times. Hello. OK, Emma. OK. I just ticked and crossed who was here. And I've um, put these in and they okay. can be recorded electronically. And there's those two sheets for you. Thank you very That's much. Okay. And how did the day go? It was good, yeah. They were, they were, they were nice kids, so... It's good, thanks very much. Well, thank you. Emma's now got another booking at Lister in a couple of days, covering PE. Some days you get to the end and you think, I don't think I could face another day like that. But I don't want to commit to any long-term permanent teaching job at the moment. So supply day to day, it gives me that flexibility. You wake up the next day, you're at a completely different school doing completely different subjects. So it's a new challenge. <laughs> 